Hello and welcome to the Thursday, December 15th, 2016 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Washington, D.C. Xavier looked at an interesting JavaScript sample that a user submitted this particular exploit abuses an interesting feature in the event viewer which is a tool in windows to look at log events well in this case actually it is abused in order to bypass uac all you have to do is you have to write the script that you would like the event viewer to execute in the right registry key and well event viewer will execute this script without actually triggering UAC and the script will run with high privileges. As far as I can tell, uh, this particular method to bypass UAC was first described back in August. So interesting to see this now in relatively common malware. And Trustwave released an advisory describing a desktop API in Skype as a backdoor because, well, instead of authenticating to the API as you typically would have to do as a desktop program can be bypassed by just naming the client correctly as Skype dashboard widget plugin. Describing that as a backdoor, I think is a little bit a stretch is a desktop API. API that allows other that allows other software running on the same system to access Skype makes it easier to do so but I think actually even without the API you probably could gain access in this situation to things like messages or audio being sent to Skype you are just foregoing the warning to the user that you're going to do this Microsoft, on the other hand, announced that they're actually going to remove this API, no longer going to support it. Of course, at this point, it's sort of just uh, being phased out. I've already talked about certificate transparency a few times on this podcast. Certificate transparency is a process where certificate authorities are publishing information about certificates that they are issuing. The idea behind these logs is that you can search uh, these logs and then figure out if someone is trying to obtain a certificate for a domain name that you are controlling. Now up to now there were a couple of sites that allowed you to search uh, these uh, logs but there wasn't really anything simple and free that would allow you to get notified. If a certificate is issued for a domain that you are in charge of, Facebook, and now of all places, did release such a system. Very easy to use. You can search the logs if you're interested in that, or you can just give them your email address and a domain that you're interested in, and they will notify you whenever they see a new certificate for your domain pop up. Of course, this is free and uh, you can sign up for any domain you're interested in since these logs are public, so you don't really have to authenticate that you own the domain. I highly recommend that you do sign up for any domains that you control. And then we have yet another update for Firefox and with that also for the Tor browser fixing a remote code execution vulnerability in Firefox. Given the attention that has been given to these bugs in the past, probably you want to update rather quickly. And Dr. Webb looked at a number of different cheap Android smartphones and in 26 of the smartphones they looked at, they found malware pre-installed on the phone. The malware is a downloader that is then used to load additional malware, in particular adware, into the phone. Now, since uh, this downloader comes as part of the firmware, if you then uninstall the adware, that is being downloaded. Apparently there's some game center and such that's being installed on the phone. The downloader will immediately reinstall this software for you. So really difficult to get rid of that software if you have an affected phone. Then if you're running Nagios, uh, which is a system that allows you to monitor system uptime and the like, and you're ingesting RSS feeds with Nagios, 
prior to version 4.2.2. You probably need to update. There's now an exploit available allowing arbitrary code execution on systems that are running this old version of Nagios. Again, the component that's vulnerable here is the one that ingests RSS feeds. So the attacker would have to take control over one of the RSS feeds that you're ingesting with the tool. And that could then be used to trigger the vulnerability. Well, that's it for today. So thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.